All right, guys, this week we're doing unit two. Week one, it says ways, characters, shape, stories. Okay. Day one. Welcome to unit two. In this unit, we're going to read many stories, poems, and myths. We'll analyze characters to understand how their actions shape events. Let's start by watching a short video. Press play. Ways characters shape stories. There are times when how you behave and what you do and say can directly impact others. And you may not even know that you are causing them problems. Then there are other times when you choose to do nothing and that too has a similar impact. How do our actions influence our lives? Read the essential question on the board. We will come back to this question again and again. If you think about it, every day you do things that influence your life. What actions have you done today? Okay, so the essential question is, how do our actions influence our lives, okay? Let's keep going. You probably chose what to eat for breakfast and what clothes to wear. Actions like these usually don't have a huge influence on your life. Other, other actions can have bigger consequences. How do you act if a friend hurts your feelings? What do you do if you see someone doing something wrong? These important actions will have lasting effects. They tell a lot about you as a person. In this unit, we will see how actions can shape our lives as we read about the actions of the characters in several stories and poems. Go ahead and think about how you might answer that question now. Keep in mind, your answer is probably going to grow and change during the unit as we learn more and more. Okay, now we're, we're going to read the pheasant and the apple tree on page four. Okay, so you see the book that says ways, characters, uh, shape stories, open to page four, please. Okay, now we're on page four. We're going to read the pheasant and the apple tree. So we're just reading this section right here. Short read one. Follow along. Remember to annotate as you read. Two fables from Esau. Retold by Gay Thompson. The Peasant and the Apple Tree. A twisted old apple tree stood in the middle of a poor farmer's garden. The farmer decided to turn the tree into firewood, but the tree was still home to grasshoppers and sparrows. They begged the farmer, Please spare our home. There is much life here. They promised to sing to the farmer while he worked his land. The farmer paid no attention to their pleas. Instead, he chopped away at the tree. When he cut into the hollow, he found a hive full of honey. The farmer tasted the honey. It was sweeter than the first day of summer. The farmer threw down his axe. He looked at the tree with many eyes. Licking his honey-covered fingers, he told the grasshoppers, sparrows, and bees that had buzzed back to the hive to stay in the tree as long as they liked. Next, we're going to work on finding key events together. Click on the video. All right, we're going to click on the video. Make sure you follow, follow along, okay? We are going to work on two fables on Aesop, and we are going to be looking for key events in the story. Key events are a little bit like key details. The word key means very important to our understanding of the story. 
So key events are the most important events in the story, and those events are the ones that are going to move the story forward. They're going to affect or influence what happens next, okay? So we are going to start with um, the beginning of the peasant and the apple tree, and we are going to look for key events events that move the story forward. The first sentence in this paragraph helps me picture the setting of the story. A twisted old apple tree stood in the middle of the poor farmer of a poor farmer's garden. So it's helping me imagine the setting of the story, but this detail doesn't move the story forward. It's a describing sentence, okay? But it's not describing a key event. Okay, an event is something that happens. The next sentence does describe an action in the story. The farmer decided to turn the tree into firewood. This is a key event. I'm going to underline this sentence. The farmer decided to turn the tree into firewood. So make sure that you're underlined, okay? Because then you could use this when you're taking your test. So what does she underline? She underlined the farmer decided to turn the tree into firewood. That's important. And I'm going to write a one next to it. This is my Put first one next key event. All right. The second half of the paragraph describes animals living in the tree and what they say to the farmer. The key event or action told here is that the animals begged the farmer to please spare our home. They are pleading with him to spare their home. So that's a key event because it's going to affect what happens next. So I'm going to put a two next to this as this is my second key event. All right, let's keep reading. So they continue to ask him to please spare their home, um, but we already got that. So I don't think we need to underline anything else here. This is some nice to know additional information. Um, in the second paragraph, the farmer paid no attention to their pleas. Instead, he chopped away at the tree. So what is he doing here? What is the action? He chopped away at the tree. That is something he does that will affect what happens. Because he chopped away at the tree, what did he find? Mm. When he cut into the hollow, he found a hive full of honey. The farmer tasted the honey. When the farmer tasted the honey, that's an action. He's tasting the honey, and that action causes something to happen next. So this is a key event. He tasted the honey, and that taste of honey makes him change his mind. So that's a key event. Let's read the next part where he changes his mind. He looked at the tree with new eyes. He's looking at it in a different way. Licking his honey-covered fingers, he told the grasshoppers, sparrows, and bees that had buzzed back to the hive to stay in the tree as long as they liked. So he told the animals to stay in the tree as long as they liked. That is my last key event because that is the last action that is going to affect what's happening in the story. Instead of cutting down the tree, he's telling them that they can stay. 
All right, I'll leave that up while you guys are underlining. So there should be one, two, three, and four, and five. Let's go. Zachary, are you done? Come on, buddy. Let's go. I don't have all day. You still have other tests to do. What? Sparrows or birds? No, I'm teaching. You have to wait. Naomi?